okay, the, really the final um, thing to understand about memory is memory architecture or those other things that define or how fast a, a single stick of memory goes. Um, and we're going to talk about a number of things when we talk about memory architecture. We, we know that we've already looked at, we look at the amount that we need, which is a section that we're going to talk about in a little bit. Um, how much do we need for a specific system? But amount doesn't affect the speed of a stick. Um, megahertz, 100% is the best way to compare sticks of RAM. But once I'm looking at the same megahertz, now we start talking about these other memory architecture items. So the first one is called memory channels. And I've got a little thing here that explains what memory channels is, but in general, motherboards support um, multi-channel memory, most of them. Um, and for instance, if you have dual channel memory, it lets it talk faster to the RAM. Um, it doesn't affect the speed of the RAM stick itself. It affects the speed of the system once you build it. Um, so, uh, you want to get memory and motherboards that support multi-channel. There's dual channel, there's tri-channel, that's very limited, very few have that, and there's quad channel, means that you're basically doubling or quadrupling the effective speed of that memory in the system that you're installing it in. It does not mean that the stick is faster, it means the system is faster if you use multi-channel memory. In order to use multi-channel memory, you have to put matching sticks of memory in matching slots. So when you look at a motherboard and you see, well, there's only two slots and it says it's dual channel, you just have to make sure both those are the same to get better speed. In other words, if you were gonna put in 16 gig of RAM, it'd be better to put in two eights in a dual channel system because then it can read and write faster to those sticks of RAM than it would be to put a 16 gig stick in on its own. So that's what channels mean multi-channel, dual channel, quad channel memory. It's not really the memory. It's the motherboard that uses that memory differently so that it effectively makes the system go faster. So when we put system memory in a system, if we put it in using the memory channels, we get a more effectively fast uh, system. The second thing uh, is memory latency. Memory latency is the delay between the CPU wanting to read or write something to memory and it actually happening. In synchronous RAM, which all DDR is synchronous RAM, um, it's talked about in clock cycles. In other words, how many times it takes to go around the board. For instance, that stick of RAM we just looked at uh, previously was at 3200 gigahertz. I'm sorry, 3,200 megahertz. That means it cycled 3,200 3, million times per second or 3.2 billion times per second. And then we have to, it doesn't write in one cycle of that. It's too fast for memory to read and write. So we have a latency how long it takes. So when we look at a stick of RAM, and this is the one we just looked at, it has on there a CL or a CAS latency number. CAS stands for column access strobe um, latency. In other words, on that speed of the motherboard at 3200 megahertz cycles, it takes 16 of those cycles before it can read or write um, to memory. That is how we can compare two sticks of memory that are the same speed. If I've got this 3200 and this 3200, and this one has a latency of 16, and this one has a latency of 17, the lower latency is the faster stick of RAM. And that's also what this timing goes to. Um, the first number in, a, in the timing of a stick of memory is that CL rating, that CAS latency rating, and that's why you always see those two be the same. So let's, let's look at that a little bit more and what that means. So we have some other terms. We have CAS latency or column access strobe. We have RAS latency or RL, which is row access strobe. And if you need to think of it in terms of a spreadsheet, uh, a stick of RAM is a big, huge spreadsheet that's eight bits wide, 
and however many bits long. And um, every single time it comes around, it writes or reads at that speed in a memory table. So that latency, again, is how many cycles around the motherboard it takes before um, the read or write actually happens. I'm going to do some math here. Um, so if uh, a um, motherboard goes at 3,200 megahertz, or the RAM and the motherboard are at 3,200 megahertz, that means there's 3,000 200 million or 3.2 billion times a second that it touches that memory on a cycle. I'm going to write in scientific notation now because it's easier. So that means there's one cycle every 3.125 e to the negative tenth seconds. And if you remember scientific notation, that means I move the decimal place. And the way I found that out uh, is just dividing that by one, okay? So if it is at 32, 3.2 billion times a second, we divide that by one, that's how many times we get it per second. Um, or how many, how long one cycle takes. So if the latency is 16 for the stick of RAM, it takes 16 times that amount of time for it to write. And if I turn that into the only, the only time notation that goes down that small, that means it's five times e to the negative ninth seconds or 0.5 nanoseconds. A nanosecond is a billionth of a second, by the way. So it takes a half of a nanosecond to write to this stick of RAM. Um, we used to get that number with uh, non-synchronous RAM uh, for memory. The reason we don't get any more because it depends on the motherboard. If we put a motherboard in that synchronizes this stick of RAM down at 2.4 meg, you can't say what it is. You have to figure it out for the motherboard that it's going in. So the way that worked, again, is I take this speed, turn it into a real number, and put it under one to find out how, how much time it takes for one second or for one cycle. And then I multiply that by the, by the latency and then I just turned it in a nanosecond. So it was, it was 0.5 nanoseconds to do, that's really fast, to do a single write. But that's why this latency matters. That number would be different if we multiply it by 17, if our CO rating was different. So that's what latency is. The lower the latency number, the faster the RAM, effectively, because that's how fast it reads and writes. But you can't just look at CL if they have different megahertz, which is why you compare with the speed of the RAM, and then if they're the same, you could look at the latency of the RAM as well. So that's number two way we can look at it. Um, the last way is error correcting code. And I've got a grid here just so you kind of understand. This is how it writes. Here's a, here's a column, there's a row. How long does it, how many cycles does it take to write? And as it writes, the, it's eight bits long because it writes a zero or a one in each one of these spots in the row as it writes a byte of data. And how many columns it is, is says how, how many bytes you get, right? So that's one bit, the whole row is one byte, and then how many bytes does it write? In non-error correcting RAM, that's what you get. You get that single table, it writes and it reads from that table. Um, but there's error correcting RAM that every single time it reads and write, it checks to see if that information was correct. And it does that through um, error checking with parity. And so, um, um, so error checking is one of the way um, that Error checking is for server RAM in general, and it's so that on an enterprise system, uh, every single time it reads and writes it, makes sure that that information is correct. And the question is, how does it do that? So in desktop RAM, every uh, row has eight bits. In server RAM, every row has nine bits. And what it does is, as it fills in this with information, it does an additional write 
that figures out the parity of this. So if there were eight uh, ones in this, uh, that would make the parity even, because eight is an even number. And if it was even parity ram, it would put a zero there, so that it was still even. If there were five ones in here and three zeros, five is an odd number, so it would put a one down here in the parity bit to even the number out, so that when it reads it again, it checks that parity bit to make sure that the information that it put in there matches the information that it pulled out of there. Now, this happens in nanoseconds, but it's every single time it writes. So server RAM, because of error correcting code, is slower. So if you buy ECC, which is error correcting code RAM, it's going to be slower than non-ECC error correcting code RAM. Now, you could get errors, I guess, but that's one of the things that affects memory speed. And it conversely also affects memory price. In ECC RAM, if we look at the number of chips on a stick, there's a ninth one for that ninth column of information that gets written as it does its error correcting code. Where in non error correcting code, there's only the eight sticks or chips of RAM on that stick. So it's one ninth more expensive. There's one ninth more RAM that you never see on an ECC stick. EC3 RAM in general is more expensive and it's slower because of that error correcting code, but it's one of the architectures or um, different things that can be different on a stick of RAM that help define the speed of that stick. So when we overall look at RAM, the things that affect our speed. Um, the amount of RAM doesn't affect the speed of the individual, individual stick, but it does affect the uh, overall speed of the, the system. The technology being used, i.e. is it DDR4 versus DDR3, and obviously these go way back. The newer technology RAM is faster. The rated megahertz speed, the higher the speed, the faster it is, which corresponds to a PC rating, and then not correcting RAM is faster than error correcting RAM. And the lower a clock rating is, that CAS latency is, um, the faster the RAM is as well. Those are all the things that go together to define the overall speed of our system and the RAM that we're putting into it.